Hi, Dave Finley here with another episode of Big Data TV. Today we're here at Recomind with Craig Carpenter. Craig's the Vice President of Marketing at Recomind. And Craig, tell us a little about the company and, and what you do. Sure. So I've been with Recomind for about seven years. Uh, I run marketing, which means engaging with clients and prospects and making sure they understand everything that we do uh, and making sure that those who could benefit from our technology are, are aware of us and, and know what we do. Uh, Recomind has been around for about 12 years, and what we essentially do is we make information actionable, uh, specifically unstructured information, although we also work with structured data as well, in finding relevant pieces of information amidst the masses and organizing information and making it usable for myriad purposes. Now, the, the common wisdom in big data is keep all of it. And there's this idea that storage is really cheap. You've got open source mm -hmm. software. You've got things like that. Is that kind of your thinking, or how do you think about this, this big data space? It does seem to be the traditional uh, common wisdom, if you will, uh, but it seems to be giving way to a much better approach recently. Um, storage costs on a per unit basis are definitely going down, but they're not coming close to keeping up with the growth in information overall, uh, which is not only leading to higher and higher storage costs, but it's also making it harder and harder for people to do their daily jobs, uh, whether they're in records management or sales or marketing or whatever the case may be. So the better approach uh, and what our clients are doing and they're seeing a, a real benefit from is organizing information, which allows them to keep what they want, use it uh, uh, for business purposes or keep it for regulatory or litigation purposes and get rid of the rest on a schedule that makes sense for them. That is something that is really the future of information management and analysis, uh, both of which are subsections of, of this thing we call big data. Um, and that's really going to be the way people handle it going forward. And the only way to do that is to use technology. You know, technology got us in this mess, it's going to get us out. Because you're talking about very large, diverse data populations. And technology, uh, machine learning technology specifically, is really the, the best, if not the only way, of understanding what it is you have so you know what you want to keep and what you can get rid of. And expand a little more on that. You know, we've got structured data, traditional databases, we've got unstructured data. What is unstructured data in your mind, and kind of what's the range of data that people are working with? So just to, to take a look at the range, you know, on, on the, the real structured end, you would have something that's in a database, something that's in a table, you know what it is, it's in a very specific finite format, um, and it's very difficult or very easy to understand what it is and manage it. On the other end of the spectrum, you have a text file, or you have a tweet, or an IM, or something like that, that other than the actual wording, you don't know what it is, and you don't necessarily have context and metadata associated with it. And then there are things in between, like email and that sort of thing. Uh, most applications and most technologies do a good job with structured data, and do a really poor job with unstructured data because they don't have that cheat sheet to tell them what it's all about. Uh, what we do is we work with the full spectrum of information, specifically with unstructured, because that's the really hard stuff to work with. And our uh, algorithms go in and they understand what any piece of information is about, and they relate it to other pieces of similar information, whether it's in a different language, different format, different location, doesn't matter. Our technology is able to glean what things are about using context uh, and find similar piece of information, which that's the key step in the process because anybody can figure out what they want to keep or not keep. They just need to know what they have to play with to begin with. So and they're, they're keeping all this data or not keeping it, and how should they think about the specific technologies that they want to adopt? Is it a technology issue? Is it a policy issue? What, you know, what's the framework that someone with this challenge should be using? Which is just about every company or corporation or entity out there. Um, it's First and foremost, it's a process um, situation and it's, it's a process problem and, and a people challenge because every, all of us going about our daily business, um, we struggle with the kind of deluge of information we're facing on, on an everyday basis. So people need to understand what the challenge is and how to do their jobs better. Uh, then the process needs to be implemented to facilitate the technology. And technology, frankly, comes last because if you just try to slap technology on top of a challenge, you'll end up with a bigger challenge in most cases. So understanding how people need to work, 
and then building a process that will meet their needs once you have technology plugged in. And then the third step being technology that essentially automates the understanding and classification organization of information. That's kind of the, the three-legged stool that people really need to, to attack this. And when done well with the right process and the, and the right technology plugged in, it will reduce uh, 90, 95, 99% of the noise out there and let people focus on the, the one to 10% of stuff that they actually really care about. And that's really what you need to do today, let alone five, 10 years from now when the volumes just go up. Now, Recommind's pioneering this area called information governance. That's right. Uh, tell us what information governance is and whether you're a technologist or you're a business leader in an organization, what does that mean to you? So information governance has, has changed. Uh, its meaning has changed and how it's used has changed over the years. It used to just be, if something's a business record, we keep it for X period of time and that's it. And that was quote unquote governance. Today, the situation is far more complex because you have data sources that, uh, some, of whom, some of which are behind the firewall. You have, thanks to bring your own device, other data sources that may be on someone's personal device. And thanks to things like social media and cloud computing, you have stuff that is outside the firewall some of which IT may know about, some of which they might not. So essentially what uh, information governance and our information governance platform are seeking to do is to, to really understand that full picture and to be able to automate as much of the, the tracking and the management and the analysis of that, of that information as possible. So that no matter what business unit you're in inside a company, or if you're in records management or risk management or legal, you will have confidence that the information that is subject to regulatory scrutiny or to business use or to litigation is, is reachable and you can understand what's where and be able to get at it. Uh, and that also includes uh, things like data remediation. Once information has lived its useful life, it should be destroyed. It's perishable like anything else. But without an active and, and proactive information governance process, you're not gonna be able to do that. How does that work typically in, in these organizations? You've, you've often got policy and all of the documentation and, and writing, essentially, that goes with that. And then you've got implementation, and the IT people are sort of trying to tie IT to policy. And really, your technology helps with a lot of that. Um, how, does that how is that possible for an organization to sort of bridge the policy and the implementation? Well, in all candor, uh, today, most companies and most entities aren't doing a great job of it. And it's not because they're not trying, it's because you have a policy that is oftentimes developed in a vacuum that is meant to reflect a perfect situation. And then you have IT that's dealing with reality. And they have people bringing in devices that may or may not be supported, and you have you know, Dropbox installations that IT may or may not be aware of, et cetera. What our technology seeks to do is to essentially bridge that gap um, and allow the IT department to do what their job and their mandate is, which is support the business to, to really get, gain competitive advantage, while also supporting the legal and compliance and risk management and records management so that they can keep track of where all this stuff is and be able to take some action proactively when needed to and, and, and reactively when they need to as well. And it, it, as we talked about earlier, it's not just the technology. You need to have the proper policies in place. But you also, especially these days, you can't just have a policy in a vacuum because after the fact, if you made no effort to enforce your policy or audit it or see if it was actually being followed, you're gonna be guilty of, of as bad a sin as if you hadn't had a policy at all. So our technology helps essentially validate and enforce the policy uh, in a way that works for IT and works for the day-to-day -day users as well, who after all, I mean, you're trying to run a business, you're trying to create revenue and profit, so it can't just be all about the stick, you gotta have some carrot there too. Great, great. So. Recommind's been an amazing story, really. 12 years, uh, bootstrapped, uh, exciting times ahead. What do you see on the horizon for the company? Well, if anything, our biggest challenge today is being disciplined and making sure we don't try to be everything to everybody uh, because we have a, the blessing and the curse, it's 99% of blessing, is that our technology can be used in a lot of different ways. Uh, we've actually had customers bring us into a conference room and say, here are the five projects we're working with you on, here are another 12, we want you to work on with us in the coming years, which is, which is pretty heady stuff. Um, but by the same token, we have to stay true to, to what we're trying to solve today and set ourselves up well for the future. So you know, in, in under, the, under the rubric of big data, 
uh, we've had a lineage in more on the reactive side and e-discovery and, and compliance and, and now governance as we talked about. Increasingly, we're gonna expand, um, not to the exclusion of, of what we've done today, but, but to complement it on, on the proactive side, to allow business users to be able to access and find information and maybe even have information find them that is relevant to them. And that's under the, the larger heading of either collaboration or, or analytics in our parlance. Uh, which ironically enough is actually where the company started as an enterprise search engine. Um, so for us, it's all coming full circle and, and the future is very bright. We're very excited about it. Uh, but obviously we need to stay focused and make sure we're staying true to our customers. Great. Well, Craig, thanks so much for being on the show. It's been a real pleasure talking with you. Thanks, Dave. My pleasure.